I'm turning a basket of figs into this delicious fig preserve. And I'm gonna show you how I water bath can them as well so that they can stay on my shelves until I'm ready to eat them. Hi guys, and welcome to Moat Cottage Homesteading. Start off by getting your freshly picked or purchased figs and wash them under cold running water. Wash the lemons as well. Chop off the ends of the figs and any blemishes that are on the figs or any bugs that happen to be in them, cut them out and place them in the large cooking pot. Cover with four quarts of boiling water and let that stand for 15 minutes. I weigh them down with a plate to keep them under water. Measure out your five and a third cups of sugar. Cut your two lemons into thin slices, discarding the seeds and the ends. Drain the boiling water from the figs and then rinse with cold water and drain that as well. Cutting the figs is a personal preference. I cut my larger figs into quarters and my smaller figs into halves but you could cut them up even smaller because they do hold their shape quite well. Unless they're overripe and really soft and mushy, then they may not. And I'd really definitely keep them bigger then. Of course, use a plate or a chopping board when you're cutting them up because that's a lot safer than trying to do it in your hands with a camera. Add your sugar, lemon, and two quarts of water to an empty pot. Bring it up to the boil, stirring so that you can dissolve the sugar. Once the sugar's dissolved, boil for 10 minutes. Remove the lemon slices into a sieve and then squeeze all the juice back into the pot. As much as you can get out of those lemons. Now it's time to put the figs into that syrupy water and cook them. The figs are looking pretty good. You can cook them longer than this and make them more transparent, but this is how I like to do them. Strain the figs into a colander, into another saucepan because we're going to need to boil down the liquid. Let as much of the liquid drain into the saucepan as you can be patient enough to do without squashing the figs. Place the syrup back on the stove top and boil until the syrup is thick. Keep an eye on it, you don't want it to burn. It's such a beautiful colour. Pour the syrup over the figs and let it cool down. I usually put a lid on it so that the bugs don't get in and then put it in the refrigerator for six to eight hours. Eight hours later, I set up my water bath canner and get my preserves out of the fridge and heat them up, bringing them to a boil. While the figs are heating up, I've set up for canning. I've got my jars all sterilized and clean. They're hot and I'm checking the rims to make sure that there's no little nicks out of them and that there's no cracks in the jars. I've got all my tools set up over here and I've got my vinegar, lids and rings. I've got the jars on a tea towel on a wooden board so that when the hot figs go in and the syrup and the jars warm up, they're not gonna damage the table. And then I have a topping board over here so that the saucepan can sit on top of that and not damage the table as well. Now I think we're all right to set up. We'll just go and see what's happening with those figs. For preserves in half pint jars, we need a quarter inch headspace. So I'll try and fit as many figs in as I can and then top up with the syrup.
that's close, that one. We still need to be able to get the air bubbles out as well. So I don't want to fill them up to height just yet because I have to do a bit of swirling and a quarter of an inch headspace isn't a lot of room for sloshing around. So we'll get them close and we'll top them up with syrup, like I said. I wish you could smell how good this smells. To remove the air bubbles, you can use a flat knife or if you've got a debubbling tool, use that and just put it around the sides and squeeze in gently so that the food doesn't slosh out. There's a bit more room in there now. This will help us to get the right amount of headspace because if there's air bubbles in there, we're actually going to have more headspace. And we want it to be exactly a quarter of an inch if we can get it there. I've got the water bath can on. There's plenty of water in it so that it will cover the jars by an inch at least. Canning syrupy food is really messy, so it's really hard to keep your rims clean because you spill syrup even with the funnel. So I'm going to have to make sure I get all of that sticky stuff off so the lid seal. Let's get it up to our quarter inch headspace. And get the figs underneath the syrup so that I've got a flat surface that I'm measuring. quarter inch space. The reason I sit them on a tea towel on the chopping board is because I drip a lot of syrup everywhere and it's easier to clean a tea towel. It just helps with cleanup for me anyway. To give the rims a good clean up, I'm using some white vinegar with a clean tea towel. And I dip it in and wipe the edges, trying not to get it into the syrup and the figs. And really get that off the rim as well as the thread. And because I've spilt so much of it on, I'm using the vinegar with two different parts of the towel and then I'll use a dry part as well. Exciting! My lid's in warm water and I place it on, centre it Put a ring on, finger tight. So I don't have to hold the jar and really tighten it on or anything like that. It's just finger tight. So one done. This method that I'm showing you today is out of the Ball Blue canning book. The Ball Preserve canning book? The canning blue, the blue canning, the blue, the blue book of canning preserves? Oh, I don't even know. I don't know what it's called. It's one I use all the time. I've got a link in the description below if you want to get it. It's the best canning book that I've come across and I've got quite a few. So that's the one that this is out of. Oh, this is so exciting. I love it. I love it. I just, I look forward to tasting them, especially if I can save a jar for winter time because when it's gray and cloudy and cold, it is so good to be able to have summer fruits. Lid on, centre it. Ring on, find the start of the thread. 
and finger tight. We're nearly there. Oh, oh God, I'm missing steps. I'm so excited. I just want to get them in the canner. <laughs> Now to put them in the canner. The jars are placed on the elevated rack over the simmering water. Lower the rack and make sure that the jars are covered by at least an inch of water. Because I'm using my pressure canner and I don't put the dial gauge in, there is a gap in my lid. I always make sure I put at least two inches of water to cover the jars. Place the lid on and put it in the lock position. Adjust the heat to medium high and bring up to a rolling boil. Once it's at a rolling boil, you process the cans for 10 minutes. When your 10 minutes is up, remove the heat and open the lid away from you so that the steam and water doesn't drip on you. Place the hot lid on a suitable surface that it's not going to melt and leave your jars in there for five minutes under the water. There's a flock of Corellas flying over. They're very loud. You can see how the water is over an inch above the lids of the can still. So I had plenty of water to allow for the excess steam to go out of the top of the canner. When your five minutes is up, remove your jars from the canner. Do not tighten the bands or loosen and let the jars cool for 12 hours. Check your seals and remember to label and store your jars. 100% success rate. To see what's happening on our homestead, check out some of my blog videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.